But what's the basic physiology behind BV ECMO? So as uh, we all know, content of arterial oxygen, it depends on hemoglobin and saturation, plus a little bit on dissolved oxygen as well. But mostly it's hemoglobin and the saturation, which is guiding our oxygen content and delivery of the oxygen, which is dependent on our cardiac output and uh, content of arterial oxygen. So VV ECMO doesn't affect cardiac output. Patient normally remains on their own cardiac output. So it just affects the content of arterial oxygen by affecting the saturation. And as we all know that uh, what's the oxygen consumption? Oxygen consumption is just the difference between the arterial and venous, uh, mix venous uh, oxygen content. So if a patient is on uh, uh, VV ECMO, so their oxygen consumption changes a little bit. It becomes like, a, because now we have two components here. One content of arterial oxygen is coming from the native lungs and another one coming from the ECMO. So, and they are just going into the right atrium and then going through the uh, uh, right atrium, right ventricle, and then passing through the uh, lung and then they are going back to the uh, tissues. So content of uh, arterial oxygen will be the final content in a patient who is on VV ECMO and uh, we are assuming that lungs are not functioning at all. So what will be the content of arterial oxygen? It will be the content of arterial oxygen will be equal to content of uh, post-oxygenation. So when blood is coming out of the oxygenator, that will be the 100% oxygenated blood. And the extracorporeal blood flow, which is coming through the uh, oxygenator or membrane, which is passing through the membrane, you know, all cardiac output doesn't uh, pass through the oxygenator or uh, doesn't pass through the membrane of ECMO. It's just uh, some part of uh, cardiac output will go through the uh, oxygenator, through the drainage cannula, and remaining part will work as a normal uh, venous oxygenation. So content of arterial oxygen will be a sum of extracorporeal blood flow into content of oxygen in the post oxy uh, membrane. Plus uh, it will be uh, when we are uh, taking this uh, central venous uh, oxygenation in the account. So we have to reduce this extracorporeal blood flow from the cardiac output. This will mix in the uh, right atrium, it will bypass the lung because lungs are not working and it will give you the content of arterial oxygen in the end. Do you understand what am I trying to say? So basically it's the extracorporeal blood flow coming through the membrane and uh, venous oxygenation, which is not coming through the membrane, they will mix in the right atrium and they will make the content of arterial oxygen in the end. So it's the mixture of uh, two systems. One is the native system, which is not oxygenated by membrane. And another one is the uh, mixture because it's a venous blood. So another one is the mixture of the post -ox uh, membrane, ox I mean, post uh, ECMO flow. I will say it's post ECMO blood, which is coming through the 100% oxygenated membrane and then mi mixing in the right atrium. So this makes the our ultimate uh, content of arterial oxygen, mixing of flow from the ECMO and mixing of the flow, which is not coming through the ECMO. So some blood comes through the ECMO and some blood doesn't come through the ECMO. So these two contents after mixing, they make the ultimate saturation or ultimate oxygenation of the ECMO. This is the most important thing we should understand. Now, if we rearrange this formula, as you know, some blood is passing through the uh, ECMO machine or membrane, some blood is not passing through the, so cardiac output can be divided into two things. One, one thing is uh, coming through the membrane and another part, it's not coming through the membrane. So it's a ratio of the extracorporeal blood flow, which is going through the membrane and ratio another portion, which is not going through the membrane. This is very important in ECMO, not only extracorporeal blood flow, it should be a 
ratio of extracorporeal blood flow and cardiac output. So to understand this concept, so one part of a, uh, so we can return, uh, we can um, consider venous return, how is it working? One part, which is equal to the extracorporeal blood flow will pass through the oxygenator and will return to the right atrium, which is fully saturated with a uh, post-oxy PO2, maybe 400, 500. Second part of venous return, which is equal to the amount of flow that exceeds the extracorporeal blood flow, will have the saturation of venous blood. So one part of uh, cardiac output is going through the membrane. Another part, which is cardiac output minus extracorporeal blood flow, it is not going through the membrane. It's just bypassing the membrane and it's mixing in the right atrium with the uh, post uh, fully saturated blood. So mixed venous blood of the patient will be mixed average of uh, these two proportion. And it all depends on the ratio between extracorporeal blood flow and cardiac output. So the venous oxygenation is the, and the, um, it will depend on the ratio of the extracorporeal blood flow and uh, how much flow is going through the membrane, what's your cardiac output. And also it will depend on the, it will depend on the venous oxygenation coming back from the, uh, the part of uh, cardiac output, which is not getting through the membrane and also it will come through the uh, functioning of the membrane. Suppose there is uh, some uh, clots in the membrane or some bubbles in the membrane, of course your blood will not be fully oxygenated and then it will mix with the central venous blood which is also not oxygenated and of course patient will have hypoxemia, their content of, arterial ox uh, content of venous, mixed venous oxygen will be low and subsequently content of arterial oxygen will also be low. To understand, uh, so uh, I will come to recirculation later. So to understand this uh, uh, fact, let's uh, go through this uh, picture. This is the basically basis of uh, all the ECMO, uh, VV ECMO modalities. So as you can see, let's uh, start from the tissues. Can you see my scroll? Arterial blood is coming from uh, the left ventricle, going to the tissue, and then there is anastomosis and capillaries, and then venous blood is coming from either from the right internal jugular or from the femoral. So what will be the content of uh, a venous oxygen, it will be CVO2, and if we multiply it with cardiac output, that, is, that flow is going to the membrane, but all flow doesn't pass through the membrane. It's like uh, only 60, 70, sometimes 80%, or maybe low, pass through the membrane, and some will bypass it and directly goes to the another part of a uh, uh, vein. So the uh, blood passing through the membrane will be 100% fully oxygenated with a very high uh, PO2. It will be 400, 500. And the blood passing, uh, bypassing the membrane, it will mix with the uh, fully saturated blood. And this will go to the right atrium. And then from right atrium to right ventricle. And after that, it will go to the left side and it will try to oxygenate. That will create the content of arterial oxygen. So basically, in a non-functioning lung, content of arterial oxygen is dep it depends on how much blood is passing through the membrane. That will be extracorporeal blood flow. And how much blood is not going through the membrane, that will be the venous, sat venous oxygenation or venous saturation, just, to, for, just for simplification. Unfortunately, when you insert um, ECMO cannulas, uh, sometimes due to proximity of ECMO cannulas, some blood comes back to the drainage cannula. So suppose uh, we took blood from the femoral vein and then we uh, gave it back through either femoral or right internal jugular or left internal jugular vein. So due to proximity of cannula and due to centrifugal function of the uh, pump, it creates some vacuum and some completely oxygenated blood goes back to the pre-oxy uh, blood, or you can say 
it's just recirculating it's not going through the to the right atrium to the left uh, lungs and to the left ventricle so this blood is just uh, circulating round and round and round so this uh, recirculating blood is not contributing in oxygenation but there is some uh, extracorporeal blood flow or some cardiac output which is wasted here so you can see suppose uh, we have given 100 here 20 years uh, 20 is going to this side on the venous side 80 percent of blood is going through the extracorporeal membrane and now this 80 percent blood is completely saturated it should go to the right atrium but there may be 10 15 percent recirculation so ideally from 80 percent you will reduce uh, deduct 10 percent so it's just 70 percent of uh, fully oxygenated blood going here 10 percent is coming back and 20 percent is not oxygenated this is how things work in ACMO it's just a very oversimplification I'm not uh, uh, involving native lungs uh, because it will be very complicated otherwise so to understand the situation again we took the venous blood from the femoral vein, circulated it through the membrane, 100% oxygenated blood is going to the right atrium. But all blood, all cardiac output doesn't pass through the membrane. Some cardiac output goes without oxygenation to the venous side and to the right atrium. That is the venous content of venous oxygen and some blood is recirculating here and this blood is also not contributing to oxygenation. Mm -hmm.